The evidence is overwhelming. And so whether you claim your property to be part of Rome or whether Rome claims that part of piece of property is granted to you through their system, all property is ultimately owned by the divine and the divine has bestowed, granted all rights of property administration through now the One Heaven Covenant, the UKDA models down to the local community level. So in answer, Galactic Sojourner, to your question, when you register your property uh, in the registers of your community to which you belong, when those communities are recognised by deed and you are part of its administration, then absolutely uh, that is a recognition of what has taken place. Now, I understand if people are fearful in this transition, as I have a certain angst, that when you're dealing with an old lion that loses its power in the jungle, that is when it's at its most dangerous because it has nothing to lose. So yes, there is the chance over the transitional period that we will see absolute mayhem in the bankers, industrialists, the elite, the parasite, and of course the Roman cult. So whether you do it today or tomorrow, that's up to you. But when the register's on, that register system will be a challenge of the Roman register and will be part of the claim system that all property is administered by the local communities and then scaled up to the larger communities, as is your right. And Rome and their system has no right to claim to be the administrators on behalf of the divine. So it's a long-winded answer, I know. Sorry, my answers tend to be a bit long-winded sometimes because there is a lot to explain but I hope that answers the question for you, Galactic Sturna. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to see if we have any more callers on. We do. We have Ron. So I'm just going to get Ron on the line. Hopefully get Ron on. Ron, can you hear us? Hi, Frank. It worked. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was good. Yeah. Hey, you know, um that notice that uh that we've been working on, I removed all the underlines and I did not I did not personally sign on a line. Now, in the notary section, the notary verification, there were lines for uh putting the date, the month, their signature. It, it, is the is the document dead now? No, no, it's not. Um, look, the thing is, I would say that these are like the Borgias. You know, they were experts in how to kill their enemies. Yep. There are the tricks and tricks and uh, potions of the uh, private Roman cult, uh, private Roman cult, the private bar guild. Sorry, uh, Freudian slip. The private bar guild that most of their members have forgotten and a few of them still remember. So what I would be uh, suggesting is over time we want to avoid these elements. But our intent is clear and the fact that we can name their tricks is also clear. So if, if it was a reason for them not to execute it based on this trick, uh, they'd have a lot of explaining to do because how many deeds are executed with a line? Millions. Exactly. So I don't think they want that can of worms to be open. Ron, I don't think you have a problem. But in future, let's not uh, use that uh, trick of theirs. Right. Fair enough? Fair enough. Okay. Bye. Okay, see you. Bye. I'll get to the next caller. And, and thanks for those that want to talk. I hope I, I answer your questions. Um, I just want to see if we have uh, any other uh, questions at the moment. Um, I had uh, I had uh, 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 truth matters to me that 
maybe wanted to follow up on some comments on David Wynn Miller. That would be fantastic, actually, if you are able to come on as a caller, um, let us know and get into the queue. I think it would be great to hear another opinion. I'm always nervous when, when I speak of, of other people because I, I think anyone that tries their best to help, and there are a lot of people doing some fantastic stuff, even if their egos sometimes out of control, you know, I, I think it's great because collectively we can work. But there are some things that some people do that are never done for that intent and in actual fact create untold misery. And that's why I feel so strongly about this David Wynn Miller gobbledygook because unfortunately it has created an enormous amount of misery and wasted effort around the world and it's got to stop. I mean, the madness has got to stop. So, yeah, it'd be great to hear from you. Um, let me uh, unmute the next caller, George Allen, and hopefully we can get George on the line in a second. George, can you hear us? George Allen. Hello, George Allen. Can you hear us? You're just a bit quiet. Can you speak up a bit? Hello, George Allen. Can you hear us? George, if I can't hear you, I'm going to have to uh, put you back on, on mute and ask you to go back in the queue. George Allen, are you there? Okay. Yeah, hello. No, I can't hear uh, George, so I'm going to have to um, mute George and then go to the next caller. And uh, yes, truth matters to me. Uh, Greg, if you can get in the queue, would be fantastic. Because um, I'm sure people would love to hear. I'm going to the next caller, Firefighter. Can you hear us, Firefighter? Yes. Uh, Frank. Yeah. How you doing? This going is, well. This is uh, Doug calling from uh, Michigan. Hi, Doug. How you doing tonight? I'm going well. Uh, I got a question for you. I was curious. Uh, earlier tonight, you had made a comment that uh, that uh, um, Yeshua kind of dicted the uh, Tanakh. I was wondering if you could email me out some of that stuff. Uh, so t um, you're talking about when I made the comparison that um, look, I the way I would say this is this. Yeah, look. If you read just the words attributed to Yeshua, Jesus, from Matthew, uh, Mark, and, and John, Luke, even though it's listed as a gospel, is admitted to being hearsay, but John, um, Mark, and, and Matthew are first-hand claimed speaking. When you look at some of those key words, such as the Beatitudes, Sermon on the Mount, and the lessons and the parables. Uh, there are direct challenges to Leviticus and what we would call Talmudic law through his examples. Now, I only highlight that to say that there is a problem. I don't think it's a bad thing if one wishes to live in the shoes of Jesus. I actually think that's commendable. In fact, the Cathars sought to live that way um, and people today like the Amish seek to live in a Christ manner. Yes, don't? Yes. My reference was merely to the claim that some make that the only law we need is contained wholly within the Bible. And it wasn't a, a, it wasn't a claim against the Bible. It's not a claim against the people who believe that. And it's certainly not a claim to people who wish to live in a respectful manner. It was merely to say that if you use that claim as a reason not to develop a model, well, it doesn't have to be UK, dear, but any comprehensive model to replace the madness, then you are going to come up with the kinds of contradictions and challenges that I just mentioned in a very superficial way. So that's what I meant, Doug, and I'm not kind of retreating from my words. I'm really qualifying 
my intent and what I meant. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. Okay. Thanks, Frank. So with that, I mean, if I, I open it to you. I invite you, rather than me send to you, because I, I, I'd love to, but it would require me to do research to come up and give you specific examples. What I'd rather do is, 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 is ask you, please give me one or two references that you find where there is a contradiction between the rules of Leviticus and what um, Yeshua, Jesus, said. And if you found one or two, then, then there, is, uh, there is some truth. Well, there is truth in what I was saying as an example. And that's all I was saying. That's all I was meaning to say. Okay. Okay? Thank you. All right. Good on you. Bye. Yep. Uh, I'm just going to see. Okay, we've got um, we've got uh, Greg coming up, and I'm just going to put Greg on, and uh, see George Allen's come back on. So sorry, George, we weren't able to get you on before. I'll just see if we unmute Greg, and then uh, we'll get to you in a second, George Allen. Greg, can you hear us? Yes, I can, Frank. I'm right here. Uh, Greg, I, I don't know if I've dug myself a big hole tonight in answering honestly my personal opinions on um, uh, uh, David's stuff. But right. I know that you have some first-hand knowledge. Would you be able to just give your um, experience and knowledge on this, just so that yes. some people hear from a different perspective? I'd be happy to. That's why I wanted to do that. But first off, I'd like to say that what you did say um, was actually a, a very tremendously powerful, positive answer because um, you were showing how, as we've tried many things ourselves to get the other side of this private uh, bar guild under this Roman cult system to, to see who we are, um, they refused to see it based on their game of procedures that they play. So I might, I'd like to say that, and, and we're working those solutions out as we as to speak, as you presented tonight. So on the positive note is, um, I, I just like to say that I, I am, I'm in for the duration with working with Eucadia and One Heaven, and it's because and the largest reason is all from the very foundation of my life, I've been looking for answers to have a foundation to rest upon. And I knew that the teachings of Yeshua uh, were many of those foundations. And what I've learned studying with you and the foundation that has been laid with Eucadia is it matches those foundations. So I'd like to start off with that. Now, on regarding uh, David Wynn Miller, I happened to have met David Wynn Miller shortly after I became very immersed into the study of the Patriot Law system back in 94 and 95. I uh, was introduced to a man um, in 95 who directly introduced me to David Wynn Miller at one of his earlier uh, California conferences. I think it was maybe a second or third one that he did in Southern California. And at that conference, I was flabbergasted but what I heard is you mentioned today about the language structure and and um, that it was uh, that it was supposedly mathematically perfect and I started off college as a math major so I was uh, a little bit perplexed by what he had to say but you know not having any law experience and having a brother who is an attorney in Los Angeles I was I was wanting to know whatever I could know to understand this bar system so I set out to learn this language and I, I think amongst the few people around the country was one of the few that mastered this uh, noun language where you only used uh, is and are as the verbs in a sentence. You never wrote anything past tense. Um, you um, always made sure that when you put certain nouns in order that there was a certain way that you compounded them. Anyways, long and short of it is we wrote a ton of documents. We filed them in the United States District Court on behalf of other people, and every single thing that we ever filed was completely disregarded. It was never accepted, never seen as a valid document. And as we've talked about one issue, one subject, one point, one, uh, one, one motion, we've put everything together as one, we threw in the kitchen sink back in those days, and everything was just tossed. The, 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 um, the thing that got me is, at least there are several positive things that came out of my experience with David Wynn Miller. One is I... I grabbed a hold of dictionaries. Uh, John, who was on earlier, I uh, actually got a hold of a copy of uh, uh, Nathaniel Bailey's uh, and Universal Etymological English Dictionary. I think he has a 1760 edition of it. I think they were published from 1721 till 1799. And as a result of that, we were able to confirm the significant meanings of words uh, contradicting much of what David Wynn Miller taught. But uh, additionally, 